Many people who get diagnosed with borderline personality disorder end up denying their diagnosis or just don't talk about it altogether. And why is that? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video because it's the last day of Mental Health Awareness Month. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do, typically I look at different topics going on in the YouTube community or pop culture and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. But I'm very big on mental health as well. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul so I can interact with all of you beautiful people out there. I make announcements and all sorts of other cool stuff, all right? But anyways, this, this video, this idea for this video has been in my head for a while. I was recently reading a book called The Buddha and the Borderline. If any of you are interested in borderline personality disorder, or if you've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, you want an excellent book that goes through this young woman's journey um, of being diagnosed as well as her recovery, I cannot recommend this book enough. It'll be linked down in the description below. But anyways, one of the parts that stuck out to me was how she was talking about you know her interactions with people and other people who were diagnosed and rejected that diagnosis all right so before i move forward full disclaimer for those of you who don't know me no i'm not a licensed therapist or a psychologist i am just very nerdy when it comes to mental health and psychology and all those other things so i like to put my knowledge out here on youtube to hopefully educate some people and maybe it'll help you understand your disorder a little bit more or it'll help you understand somebody else who is struggling with this disorder all right so first question is what is borderline personality disorder all right you might have heard of it but maybe you don't know the symptoms so here is a little summary of the symptoms as stated in the diagnostic and statistical manual if you don't know what that is the dsm SM5. Basically, that is the, the guidelines that medical professionals, mental health professionals use to see what your diagnosis might be. Now, this isn't like a 1000% for sure thing when they diagnose you, but it gives them kind of an idea of what you're struggling with mentally so they can offer you the best treatment possible. And check it out. I actually got my copy right here. All right. So I'm going to go through these real quick. All right. One, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. Two, a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of ideation and devaluation. Three, identity disturbance, markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. Four, impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. This can include spending money, sex, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating, etc. Five, recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, or threats, or self-mutilating behavior. Six, affective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. Seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. Eight, inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Nine, transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. All right, so these are the symptoms and if you're somebody who struggles with this or you know somebody who does like one of the main 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 symptoms of this is emotional dysregulation all right i often think about it like on a scale like if you have zero in the middle and then you got plus 10 and minus 10 most people they'll waver between like you know one to five right like you know you might get like really angry but that's like a five but for people struggling with borderline personality disorder that anger might be like furious you see what i mean or like not just getting happy but really excited Excited, or not just feeling like kind of sad, it's depressed, not feeling nervous, it's anxious, right? And when you combine that with like fear of abandonment and everything like that. So why do people deny or reject this diagnosis? Well, something that was brought up in the book, and I've seen this happen many, many, many times, like when I was working at the Drug and Alcohol Rehab Center for a little over three years, I dealt with many clients who had borderline personality disorders. And one of the main reasons was because their, their family and friends, there are a lot of misconceptions and myths about borderline personality disorder. Like one of them, one of the biggest ones is that those people are extremely manipulative, right? And the thing is, it is not intentional, okay? Like the manipulation is not intentional. Like their 
fear of abandonment, like it said in the DSM, it's real or imagined. So that person might do anything they can to keep you around because they are lacking this emotional control. You see what I mean? So it is not always intentional. And that's one of the things, like there's such a stigma around it as people, some people see that and they think that it's intentional, but most people, who struggle, from my experience that I've met, who struggle with borderline personality disorder, they hate that. They hate that they do that. They hate that there's this self-sabotage or these um, anger outbursts and things like that. But the other thing that I uh, ran into a lot when talking with clients who struggle with borderline personality disorder was a lot of therapists and even psychiatrists didn't want to work with them, all right? like. I remember working at a treatment center and people would be like, oh, Chris, like here, like, do you want to work with them? Like, I don't like working with people with BPD. And I just never really minded. I haven't had any, mm, I don't know, my threshold's probably pretty high, but I haven't had any like crazy experiences. You know what I mean? But when I would see like therapists and stuff saying they didn't want to work with somebody, I'm like, huh, right? But I think in that book, The Buddha and the Borderline, they, when they discussed it, like, it was talking about, like, how she, like, when she went to tell her mom, right? She went to tell her mom how she was diagnosed. She was finally diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Like, she was misdiagnosed with, like, depression, anxiety, bipolar. Bipolar and borderline personality disorder, sometimes those get misdiagnosed. But she goes and tells her mom, and her mom's like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have that. You do not have borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder is for crazy people, right? So that can make a person feel very, very insecure, right? Especially when people classify people with BPD as crazy, you know what I mean? So it's quite common for people to deny or reject their diagnosis. Now, I've made a video in the past, um, I know, who. Uh, Katie Morton, who is an actual licensed marriage and family therapist here on the platform, she has a video about the differences between CPTSD and borderline personality disorder, but they are very, very similar, especially because many people who get diagnosed with borderline personality disorder had some type of childhood trauma, all right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing, there's my personal view, my personal opinion on it, based on people I've met who have borderline personality disorder and are working on overcoming it, or they are in recovery, and it's this. <clears throat> Once you accept this diagnosis, like the whole reason this book exists is because once they can kind of figure out what your diagnosis is, now you can begin treatment. So, one of the best therapies, one of the best therapies for borderline personality disorder is something called dialectical behavior therapy, all right? DBT for short. Now, traditional DBT, like there are like groups, like you do like, I can't remember if it's like a six to eight week kind of group slash course, right? And you learn a bunch of different techniques for managing your emotion, right? And then you're surrounded with other people. Like if you're interested in learning more about dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, the woman in that book, um, she went through DBT, all right? But DBT, a lot of the reason it's called the, the Buddha and the Borderlines because DBT, a lot of it is based off of mindfulness, which comes from Buddhist philosophy, all right? Mindfulness is something that I've been practicing for probably about five or six years now, which has really helped me regulate my emotions and things like that. So I have reap the benefits myself because I used to have a lot of problems with emotional regulation, all right? Because it helps you stop and have that pause button. A lot of people who struggle with BPD have this Im these impulsive behaviors and they lash out or they do something reckless, you know? So it is important to kind of manage those things. So if you cannot afford therapy, what I would recommend, there are like a million, a million DBT workbooks out there. I'll link one of them down below, like one of my favorite ones. It's like, mindfulness for borderline personality disorder, something like that. I'll link it down in the description below. But if you cannot afford therapy, like do something, just do something because you can begin to get better. While your, your BPD may never be completely cured, life can get exponentially better. But if you have the resources, like if you have health insurance, talk to your doctor, talk to your insurance provider, talk to friends or family, see if they can recommend a therapist for you who specializes in dialectical behavioral therapy. I personally use BetterHelp Online Therapy. Um, 
and they have certain therapists who specialize in DBT. So if you would like to check that out, there is an affiliate link down below. Basically what that means, you get cheap, affordable online therapy and a little bit comes back and supports the channel, all right? But just know that this isn't without hope and once you accept your diagnosis, now you can begin working on it, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And by the way, before I let you go, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.